We open this week's episode of the Rebel Report returning to the roller coaster ride of who will take the reins for the running Rebels. Chris Beard is out, Marvin Menzies is in. Reaction from the students on the situation, plus Mark Anderson from the Review Journal and Ray Brewer from The Sun weighing in during this week's Rebel Report timeout. We check in with Rebel Baseball who gets a short break from a long road trip and get a look at UNLV's lacrosse team. Don't spin out of control, the Rebel Report won't fool you. It begins right now. For the second time in two weeks, the Running Rebels have a new head coach. Welcome to the Rebel Report, I'm Summer Crawley. And I'm Nakia Berry. Just after one week as official coach of the Rebels, Chris Beard vacates the position to take a job as head coach of Texas Tech University. Following the unexpected move, UNLV President Lynn Jessup and Athletic Director Tina Kunza murphy announced the hiring of new Rebels head coach Marmon Menzies the next day. Leonardo Shower joins us to walk us through the drama. Thank you, Summer. The journey for the Runnin' Rebels to get a new head coach has been unorthodox to say the least. Following a lengthy board meeting to approve the hiring of Chris Beard April 8th, they get to do it all over again with Marvin Menzies who, this Friday, who returns to UNLV after Chris Beard's untimely departure. Just seven days. That's how long it took Chris Beard to vacate the head coaching position it took UNLV over four months to fill after Dave Rice's departure in January. With an upwards of nine players potentially leaving the team for next season, Beard was expected to repeat some of the magic he brought to the Little Rock Trojans last year. We've got some guys that are going to go into their senior year, and I'm going to give those guys everything I have every single day to try to put a, floor on the, a team on the floor next year that can, that can compete. So um, I think it is safe to say that we can get it done next year, and uh, beginning here in a few minutes, I'm going to get started on it. Instead, Beard accepted the head coaching job at Texas Tech last Friday, once again leaving the Rebels without a coach. Tina Kunzer Murphy released an official statement on the matter Friday morning, expressing her disappointment with the situation and vowing to select a great coach for the coming years. After that release was made official Friday morning, we came to the Thomas and Mack Center where we ran into Tina Kunzer Murphy. We had a brief conversation with the athletic director, but she had nothing public to say about the situation. 24 hectic hours later, Marvin Menzies was announced as the new head coach. Following a seven year stint in New Mexico State, Menzies developed a reputation as one of the nation's best recruiters. Rebel fans are certainly hoping for that to be the case this season. During his tenure in New Mexico, Menzies led the Aggies to five NCAA tournament appearances, including four straight from 2012 to 2015. The new hire is pending an official approval by the Board of Regents. That meeting with the Board of Regents is set to take place this Friday. We'll be there to follow the proceedings and see if Menzies' hire will be made official. Back to Summer and Thank you, Leo. Beard has met with several players from the Running Rebel squad, and already there are several reports that both Dwayne Morgan and Ben Carter are considering staying at UNLV. We'll discuss this at length with Mark Anderson and Ray Beer in a bit later in the show. Who is Marvin Menzies, and what kind of reaction is his hiring getting on campus? The Rebel Report's Justin Guzman talked to students to find out. I'm humbled and honored by how many people are here today. I really appreciate it. I can't wait to get to work, um, and I, I can't wait to, to, to help this program get back to where it needs to be and uh, competing for championships every year. Thank you very much. And a week later, he's gone. Chris Beard's change of heart and fast exit as running Rebel head coach has Rebel fans in a tailspin. That was kind of like a, uh, you know, you got to be kidding me kind of type, you know. I mean, we just hired the guy. A week ago, you know, you spent almost two weeks, you know, trying to figure out all the contract and everything. And I was really excited to see him there. You know, it was just, you just couldn't believe it was happening. The Rebel higher-ups acted quickly, however, announcing former Rebel assistant coach Marvin Menzies to the new gig. Menzies has made quite a name for himself after his brief tenure here. As head coach of New Mexico State, Menzies has led the Aggies to its fourth straight Western Athletic Conference title and was named the 2015 WAC Coach of the Year. He seems pretty successful. He's been in the tournament five out of the last six years. He would have been there last year. They lost on a last second shot to Cal State Bakersfield in the WAC tournament. Uh, it's weird, you know, you get really excited for one guy, 
Um, so it's hard to get excited for another guy. But I am, you know, he's shown he can win, and it's been a weird few days since he's been announced. You know, I'm, I'm, I'll support him. I'm excited for him. Hopefully he can win. For the Rebel Report, I'm Justin Guzman. Coach Menzies will likely have his introductory press conference after the region's meeting on Friday. We'll recap it for you in next week's edition of the Rebel Report. Baseball has been a rare sight on the campus of UNLV. The Rebels were happy to be back this past weekend after going 3-5 and five on an eight-game road trip. The Rebel Report's Victoria's Bass will look at UNLV's quick homestand heading back on the road again. We're back here at the Earl E. Wilson Stadium to cover UNLV baseball's only home games of the month of April. The Rebels are back home to face off against the Air Force before they go back on the road to play Arizona State. UNLV baseball completes a weekend sweep with Sunday's 7-6 come from behind win over the Air Force. We knew it was going to be a tough one because uh, the pitcher that they were throwing at us and the way the Air Force kids compete, we knew this was going to be a tough one to win. Uh, just got to get after it and finish strong. It feels, it feels great being back at home. We had a long road trip. Still not finished with it yet, but it felt good being at home. It should uh, boost us playing at home in front of our fans, makes us more comfortable. And with the win tonight, that should boost us, and we should be going good from here. Oh, it always feels good to be back home. So uh, we got we had two weeks gone. Now we're here for one, one weekend. Then we're gone for the next two. So we're going to try and enjoy this while we're home. The team is currently on their monster road trip and are managing the mental and physical tolls they must face in order to be successful. No one's a fan of uh, big time road schedules, but um, you know it's been okay. Uh, everywhere we go, it's it's. The only thing tough is uh, hanging around with school, going on the road, but the road's been fun. road's always fun. It's just, it gets a little tough sometimes when you're going back-to-back -back road trips. It's, uh, it's hard to keep your body in shape when you're not at home to take care of it. So that's, that's mainly the tough part. Being on the road, you don't have really much to do. You have a lot of downtime, but you have to stay prepared for your games. And uh, being back at home, you know, we have everything here, so we know, so it's a lot easier. So we love playing at home. I don't know if with anything on the road trip we've learned, we've already known. We just got to few things we just got to keep getting better at and uh, find the right guys to put in the right situations. The team is keeping the momentum going by focusing on one common goal. Keep winning. I mean, winning's always fun. We got, we got one job to do. We're on the road. It's get wins. It's always, it's always hard to win on the road, and we got a lot of road games this month, so we're going to try and gather up as much wins as we can. Glad to have the team back for some quick home games, wishing them the best of luck on the rest of their monster road trip. For the Rebel Report, I'm Victoria Bass. With a three-game sweep of the Falcons, the Rebels improved to 15-20 and 20 on the season. Another road trip got underway Tuesday in Tempe, where the Revs beat Arizona State 11-7 on Tuesday. Rebels have seven more on the road before returning home May 3rd. Now let's go under the Rebel radar in UNLV softball. The Rebels hosted its rivals from up north, the Wolfpack, which was quite the series for both teams. Here we recap the drama. The softball team returned to Las Vegas to face its rivals Nevada Reno over the weekend. The two teams not only played for Mountain West Conference standings, but a chance to capture the Governor Series presented by Nevada Energy and Barrick and Gold. The Rebels have won all three series against the Wolfpack since 2013. UNLV leads in the points with a three-point lead to 13.5 to 10.5. In the first game, the Rebels were shut out 6-0. In the second, the team evened up the series with a 5-3 win. Unfortunately, in the last game of the series, the Rebels fell short by one run. UNR defeated UNLV 14-13. The Wolfpack finished 2-1 over UNLV and went on to add three Governor Series points to its school's total. I think it's really important that we have like all of our support system here at the home game and we just need all the support we can get and a lot of energy and I love playing at home so it's great. You know we had a plan at the plate and I thought we did a pretty good job of that. Uh, some of our, our hard hit balls didn't fall, uh, lined out into some double plays, a, a line shot to center field and uh, I felt like we did our job at the plate and just didn't quite have the luck. Um, defensively we need to uh, shore up some of the outs and, and uh, try not to force things. You know they're a good team and they put the ball in play and we got to be ready for that and make sure we're getting the outs that they give us. The girls will go on to travel to Albuquerque, New Mexico to face the Lobos April 22nd. After New Mexico, the ladies will have three more series, nine games total, left in the regular season. The team currently sits 20 and 24 on the year, ninth place in the Mount West Conference. 
I'm not sure how our audience is reacting about this, but I am positive that our reporter Natalia Lancelotti feels a little upset after this Saturday. She covered the final spring soccer game and lets us know how the team prepares for new challenges coming up in fall. The spring soccer season has come to an end. Tonight is the last game for the Rebels. Overall, the team has done pretty well. Let's hear reactions from the coach and the players. The spring gives us a chance to see some of the younger players and get them prepared for actually bigger roles in the fall. Uh, we're looking good. I think we're bringing in eight or nine new recruits, so it's going to be a lot of new players coming in. So uh, it'll be exciting to see how it's going to be when those players come. With that being said, this is how they get ready for the next season. We have some freshmen that are coming in that are true freshmen, both locally and from out of state. And we have some transfers that are guys that have experience that hopefully they can bring that experience with them and be ready right away from the start. But so far, I mean, we've done extremely well. Um, I can see right away the team chemistry is phenomenal. Um, you know, we beat two out of three professional teams that we played this spring, so I mean, we're off to a good start. These are the results of the UNLV men's soccer team during a spring. Out of seven games, they won five, they lost two. I think we're going to be doing well, especially considering how well we did this spring. I thought that we're going to be doing well transitioning from this season to the next season. Uh, I know we're going to have a, a lot of new faces coming in for, for the next season. We really appreciate the support that you've given us all spring. We look forward to having an exciting uh, season next fall, 2016. We've got a lot of new players coming in. We've got a lot of old faces that you'll remember, and uh, we want you to be a part of Rebel Soccer. Thank you, and have a great summer. Yes, you heard the coach. The Rebels are practicing for two more weeks. They will take summer off, and they will come back in August 15 for the fall season. Their first game will be in August 28th. Reporting for the Rebel Report, I'm Natalia Lancelotti. Thanks, Natalia. Great job out there. We can't deny the team had very good results during the spring season, winning the majority of games playing against teams with more experience. The Rebels will most likely have a third of the team with new players. We will see how those guys perform in the fall. Many of you may not know that there's a lacrosse team here at UNLV. They're in their current postseason run. We went to the intramural field to find out more about them. We have such a large population at UNLV. I think we're around 29,000 students and it's hard for us to field a team at times. The UNLV Division I lacrosse team only has 14 players but is ranked number 22 in the country. Which is very talented for only 14 players. We definitely are carrying the torch, uh, especially the UNLV lacrosse team. We're trying to set the tone and we only got 14 guys and most of us are from Vegas, so we're just representing Vegas uh, across the country trying to compete as best we can. The chemistry among the players built from growing up and playing together helps them to get more W's on the field. They've been in the same system. Most of these kids have been coached, coached under us in high school and middle school and then brought up to the college ranks and gone to UNLV. Lacrosse can be viewed as the fastest growing sport in Las Vegas with a lot of potential. Um, so in Vegas it hasn't been around for more than a decade and uh, my dad he played uh, in college on the East Coast and I've had a stick in my hand for pretty much all my life. It's great competition and uh, it's a very physical sport so kind of get the both best of both worlds. Team dues are $1,700 per player for helmets, pads, and travel fees. It is very expensive to play lacrosse. Referee fees, I believe, are right around $675 a game just for officials for us to play a game. In-state and out-of-state students are now considering UNLV as an option to play lacrosse because of this season's successful track record. Now that we're finally you know, doing good and beating some of these teams, um, they're starting to notice us and I'm looking forward to definitely seeing uh, the, the exposure of the sport. The goal is to be number one in the Southwestern Lacrosse Conference. We have to be patient on the field and we got to work hard off the field and we'll get there. The lacrosse team plays University of California Santa Barbara this Saturday. If you would like to sign up to play on the lacrosse team next season, you can go to unlv.edu slash srwc slash intramurals. The T-Mobile Arena opened its doors to the public just a few weeks ago. Tuesday night marked the first sporting event at the arena, which featured the Harlem Grow Charters. 
The Rebel Report's Louise Negret was there. The Harlem Globetrotters were in Vegas Tuesday night to celebrate their 90-year anniversary and to play in the first sporting event at the brand new T-Mobile Arena. Nearly 5,000 people showed up at the game, including many kids who were just trying to have some fun. I think it's awesome because it, op it opens up a lot more, you know, to see in Vegas because it's not boring anymore. You can see more stuff. But this is huge. It's awesome. The event featured local Las Vegas native Scooter Christensen, who was glad to be one of the first to play basketball in the new arena. You know, it feels good to be back home playing in front of my family and my friends. And uh, I just hope that, uh, you know, everyone enjoys it, not only myself, but the, the whole team, because, you know, not only one person, it's never one person that makes the team. It, it's the collective group that makes the team, because each one of us does something special, and they're going to see that tonight. And it's, uh, it's going to be, it's, it's a special moment tonight, and I hope everyone has, has a good time. The Harlem Globetrotters hope to be back next year to put on another great show. For the Royal Report, I'm Luis Negret. In the next week's show, we'll have an extended story on the Globe Charters and the return of Scooter Christensen to his hometown. Now we send it over to John for this week's Rebel Report Timeout. Rebel Report Timeout. All right, thanks, Summer. So we're talking about, well, the topic of discussion really for the entire Valley right now. So I'm here joined by Mark Anderson, longtime writer at the RJ. Just switched over to the Run and Rebel beat. Right. And you've been doing a great job these Thank past you. couple weeks. So thanks for coming down. And then Ray Brewer, he's been in town forever. Ray and I go way back. Um, but now you're up in the food chain at the Sun, right? What, what, what's your official title now? I'm like the assistant managing editor of digital and sports. That's that's scary. You're scared. I, I know. I, I know. I think the students are impressed right now. They probably I know. Want to impress you. Yeah. Well, hopefully uh, we could give you the information you need. Yeah, <laughs> I like it between the two of you. Yes. So a week ago we have a head coach. <laughs> yes. Uh, Chris Beard does his press conference, um, and in my opinion, and I think a lot of people's opinion, yeah. won the press conference, right. right? And I don't want to belabor this because he's not the head coach anymore, but he really left a good impression, right, he, when he stepped he on that stage through all, the whole ordeal with the Regents and everything. Yeah, I think half the room felt like they wanted to go hit the court right there for him. You know, it, it was, it, it he felt like he was speaking in a very genuine manner, and I, I don't doubt he was. And so you, you just in this track work, he won everywhere, so he thought, okay, even though reality's told you this is gonna be a little re rebuild, and maybe a big rebuild, you, you start thinking, maybe you can win next season. I mean, that's how inspiring he was. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, I think any coach is gonna win the press conference. Um, these guys are, are masters of, of motivation and delivering speeches. Uh, go back to Dave Rice's presser five years ago when he got the job, and I mean, he was great, and he had me inspired, and he talked about the history of the program, and, you know, I grew up with the history of the program, and I felt great about it as well. Um, uh, Chris Beard was, was definitely intriguing. Um, he, he was a winner. He went 13-5 last year. Um, he, he delivered a great plan, and Mark's right. I think right there you thought, like, wow, I think this isn't going to be the, the rebuild that, you know, we thought, because everybody knows they got three or four players, and you're not going to win with three or four players because you're not going to bring in 11 freshmen or whatever it is to balance it out. So you're kind of, you know, bracing for losing. And Mark's hit it dead on. You thought initially, well, maybe Chris Beard's not going to lose. Yeah. So was it Thursday night? Was it Friday morning? And I know there was drama. Did he go? Did he stay in town? But when did you first hear, was it the moment that Tubby Smith left Texas Tech to go to Memphis? Or when did the rumbling start, really, where we thought Chris Beard might depart? Well, I checked Twitter on Thursday morning, as I want to do, and uh, I started seeing it then that people were like, started speculating, what if, because the, there was already talk that Tevye may leave for Memphis. So people started to connect the, connect the dots already, and I thought the whole thing was ridiculous, frankly. I, did, I didn't take it seriously. I uh, totally agree, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. And so probably mid-afternoon Thursday, I start hearing that there may be something to this. And I remember getting a hold of a UNLV administrator and saying, uh, you might want to ha get Marvin Menzies' phone number out again. And the guy's like, are you serious? So UNLV was caught off guard. And then, of course, you know, that night you realize, okay, this, you know, there could be something to it. And then the next morning, when Texas Tech had its news conference with the AD, the one name he was asked about was Chris Beard. And so you, you knew that Chris Beard was not necessarily out the door, but you knew he was uh, heading that direction. Yeah, and it's amazing how quickly it obviously snowballed. And really... 
It feels like we've covered so much ground in 48 hours. Tina moving very quickly to hire Marvin Menzies. But, Ray, let me start with you. So Marvin's our guy now. He's the head coach. Uh, a lot of people thought George Carl was a name out there. But what do you think of Marvin? And I know you wrote a nice piece uh, really in support of him. Yeah, I actually like Marvin. I think mm -hmm. he's uh, he's very dynamic. He's got a great personality. Um, I hear he's just you know at the Minden Hall Center right now. And he's got a smile on his face. He's very energetic, very positive. And the one thing is the guy knows how to recruit. He's you know gotten four-star guys to um, New Mexico State, um, produced All-Americans at New Mexico State. Um, at the same time, it, he realized if he couldn't get talent in the you know the Southwest, that he's gone and looked for it outside of the U.S. and, and filled his roster and won. I think he's going to be able to come to Las Vegas, use the city, use the brand, and, and recruit well. Um, he's he was on Patino staff. Um, he was with Steve Fisher. He was with Lon here. Um, the guy's got his chops. He's more seasoned than Beard. Beard, for me, I always said, you know, the guy's got the X's and O's down pat. He did a good job. But could he recruit at this high level? And I think Marvin could recruit at this high level. And he's proven that he's got the X's and O's when he was at New Mexico State. So I think UNLV is probably going to be on the on the plus side of this, I'm a big recruiter guy. I, you know, you got to have the Jimmys and Joes to play, and I think he's going to have the ability to attract some of those kids here. Um, Mark, so you had some breaking news, I guess, as you right. came in here, but obviously Ben Carter, Dwayne Morgan, those, these are the names. You know, Rebel fans want to see him stay. Right. What's the very latest as far as kids staying in the program? Dwayne Morgan, is, if he hasn't already announced that he's going to announce he's staying at UNLV, which is just a huge boost for them. And maybe that helps convince Ben Carter to say, but having talked to Ben's dad, it's, it sounds like he really wants to play an NCAA tournament, uh, in the NCAA tournament next season. Realistically, you know, we probably can't get there. I mean, you never know, maybe they get hot in the Mountain West tournament, but when you look at how many spots in the roster Marvin Menzies has to fill, it's just, at this point, it's not realistic. So my gut tells me Ben Carter's not staying, but uh, Marvin Menzies is out recruiting hard. He's looking at graduate transfers like Ben Carter is, guys who can come from a four-year school and play right away. He's looking at international players. You know, Justin Jackson who's already committed to UNLV is, is one of those players. Uh, there's uh, Ray Tosango at uh, Tennessee, although he wouldn't be eligible for next season. He's, it looks like he may transfer over. So he's, he's, he's trying to do it a number of different ways. He's, it's so late in the recruiting process, though, the top high school players are gone. So he's not, he's not going to get those players. Now, maybe there's someone ranked number 82 or something who's still out there and would be a pretty good player. Uh, but as far as you're talking about your elite players, he's, he's, it's too late for those guys. The national perception now, let's go to that. Obviously, the handling of the situation, that could be a topic in and of itself. But the national perception may be a little low, <laughs> for lack of a better way to put it right now on UNLV basketball. Is the fix winning? What's the fix right now? Is it the press conference with Marvin Menzies? What do you think? Right well, I mean, I, th I think that sports writers in general uh, tend to look at things sarcastically, and I think that UNLV's got a bad shake in this whole thing. I mean, listen, the Chris Beard thing was just bad luck. Um, Tubby leaves. He had coached there previously. You know, maybe you could fault them because his daughters lived in Texas and his heart would always be there and he'd eventually be looking to leave. But I, I think that, you know, Nationally, while UNLV's rep is, is down, and rightfully so, I, I don't know if it's necessarily fair, fair. And I think because the ceiling is, is, I mean, they've hit the rock bottom, if they have just a competitive season next year, I think it's going to build a, a ton of momentum. I think it's a blessing in disguise for Marvin because even the program's biggest critics aren't going to expect much from him next year. And they're going to have a schedule you know, Duke at T-Mobile, right. a lot a lot of big-time games where they might be able to pick up one of those wins to show the program's moving in the right direction to build some confidence. And, you know, if they could win a few of those games, their RPI won't be bad. If they're right. decent in a bad Mountain West, they might have a chance to sneak in or, or go, on, go on a run. And um, I think, you know, in terms of recruiting, if you get a high school player who Mark said is ranked number 82, Maybe that's what they need because they've had a lot of McDonald's All-Americans, a lot of four- or five-star guys in the last four or five years, but those guys are looking to stay one year, two year, get to the NBA, get paid, and you need some program guys that you could develop, and maybe they're going to find some of those guys in the next few weeks, few months, where three years down the line we're saying, wow, what a blessing that it was that, that, that all this happened because they were so far behind so-and-so fell into the laps of, of Coach Marvin. Yeah, and I, we're actually jumping one step ahead here. I didn't talk about Board of Regents for Friday. Right. Mark, 
could we expect some drama on Friday? The only real drama would be the open, the public comment section. I, you know, people were upset initially when it looked like Marvin Menzies getting the job. I think that's cooled down a little bit. I think now they're seeing some players that are talking about staying. I think that's helped a lot. I think, I think there's more of a move now to get behind them. So you might have a couple people show up still upset at the, at the, at the meeting, but I don't think it's going to be overwhelming number. And, you know, it's different to rant on Twitter than it is to stand and, and complain when the coach is sitting right next to you. So I, I don't think it's going to be that much strong. I think the Regents got what they wanted. You know, we followed the template this time. The pay is much less than it was for Chris Beard. I think this thing's going to pass 11-2 or 12-1. All right. Mark, Ray, guys, thanks for coming down. I know we went a little long on time, but I think Rebel fans out there really enjoy what you guys have to say. And they're, uh, well, I guess yearning for your insight. So appreciate it, guys. Thank you. All thanks, right, John. let's send it back to the desk. Uh, it's time for our Outstanding Rebel of the Week. Ladies? The 25th ranked UNLV men's golf team competed in its 10th tournament of the season back on April 9th and 10th and came out victorious. Taking home trophies and team and individual titles, the win adds to the Rebels' previous top five finishes in the last three tournaments. The Rebel Report's Cassie Soto tells us about one golfer who stood out in the tournament, earning himself the honors of Outstanding Rebel of the Week. As the men's golf team returns home after visiting Ohio to compete in the Robert Kepler Intercollegiate Tournament, one Rebel excelled in the chilly conditions. San Jose native Shintaro Bon won the first tournament of his career as a Rebel, but the competition in the tournament wasn't the only issue that Bon and the rest of the team had to face. The cold weather in Columbus brought a low of 36 degrees and snow flurries to go with it. Don't think I'm ever going to wear that many layers ever again. I had four layers on pants and then four layers on my top. So it was pretty hard to swing, but I mean, just kind of find a way and just get it done. Bon was able to get it done as he shot one under par 70 on the first day of tournament play and three over 74 on the second to finish off at two over 144. Bon credits the success of the team to the coaching staff and the team's ability to work together. I think this semester we're, we're clicking a lot more. I'd say last semester we, we struggled quite a bit, but I think we found our differences and our weaknesses and we grinded through and I think we're getting there. Shintaro dedicates his passion for golf to his father and his brother and hopes to bring home another title in the coming tournaments. For the Rebel Report, I'm Cassie Soto. With a total of three wins this season, the Rebels will head to Tucson, Arizona this weekend to compete in the Mountain West Championships. UNLV will face New Mexico in the first round. The last time the Rebels won the tournament was back in 2002, so we wish them good luck here at the Rebel Report. Well, that's it for this week's edition of the Rebel Report. Be sure to stay tuned for the last remaining weeks of our show. You can catch up on our previous shows on our YouTube channel, Rebel Report UNLV. Also, tweet us if you have any sports stories for any Rebel Report UNLV. And follow us on Instagram at Rebel Report underscore UNLV. See you next week.